I don't know why I didn't make this video when Black Adam was coming out. But I'm making it now. So here we go. Hello everybody and welcome back to Pitch This here on the channel. This is the show where I, Mr. Eli Mack, present to you a movie or a TV show pitch that I would like to see because I like to make pitches. And if you like this show and you like what I do on the channel, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with all the videos I have here on the channel. Also hit the notification bell, that way you can be notified whenever a new video like this comes your way. So I set it up top that I was surprised that I never actually made a pitch video for what I would do with a Black Adam movie because when the movie Black Adam was coming out and sort of when it was announced, I was sort of thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder what I would do for a Black Adam movie because I'm someone that thought that Black Adam should not have his own movie. I thought Black Adam should have appeared in a Shazam movie and sort of be the main antagonist of Shazam. But then after like it was seen dead set that Dwayne Johnson was going to make a Black Adam movie on his own, like this was going to be a solo film. I started thinking, okay, well, since that's sort of happening and they haven't found a writer at that point, around the time when I thought of this idea, I thought to myself, okay, if I were to do a Black Adam movie, what would I do? And that is the pitch I'm going to be presenting to you because I've had this idea for a while and I'm going to be honest, this is this video is also sort of going to be a little review for Black Adam. So, without any further ado, let's get into the movie pitch for Black Adam. And so before we get into the pitch, let me get into my little review of Black Adam. I enjoyed Black Adam. I thought it was a good movie. However, I think the main problem that I had with Black Adam was that it was set in modern day. I don't think the movie should have been set in modern day. In fact, I think the movie would have been more interesting if it would have been set all the way back in the past, during the ancient times. I think that the movie would have been better and sort of like an origin story type thing. And I know a lot of people aren't big fans of origin stories, but even if you look at um, the Black Adam movie that we got, that was also sort of an origin story. It was an origin story of how Teth Adam truly understood what it meant to be sort of a hero or at least an anti-hero at best. And that was sort of the way we got into um, the story and the idea of what um, what Black Adam was going to be doing in the future. However, my version of Black Adam is very much going to be dedicated to the idea of it being a full-blown origin story. Now, is my backstory for the Black Adam movie and during the ancient times going to be similar to the ones in the actual Black Adam movie where he had a son and he was, um, him and his wife were slaves and then his son was the chosen one. Oh, by the way, spoilers for Black Adam, I completely forgot. But yeah, spoilers for Black Adam where his son was the one that was actually chosen to be um, the champion of Shazam and then, or of the wizard, and then he transferred the powers over to Teth Adam and then Teth Adam went on a killing spree, killing all the people that um, killed his family. No, that is not my backstory because I'm looking at it more, I think that was more of the new 52 origin where black adam's nephew actually was going to be given the powers and you know it's funny whenever i look back at the um, movie black adam origin it's completely different from any version that i've seen and so instead of it being like in the new 52 comics where it is his nephew that is being chosen but then teth adam kills his nephew so he can get the powers very darker. That's very much villain territory. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go in that direction. I'm not really gonna go in the Teth Adam was not the chosen one. That is not the story I'm going with. And I'm not going with the slave storyline either. In fact, I'm going more with the New 50, not New 52, the, the post-crisis pre-New 52 origin of Black Adam, which is more of, along the lines of Black Adam was the son of the Pharaoh, specifically Pharaoh Ramses II. And I even have like right here a full three act structure of what I have ready for the Black Adam movie. That's how detailed I put into this movie. 
And so, sort of like, this is what's happening in Act 1. And Act 1, and like, I looked up a website that so showed you, like, this is how you act like separate the acts and so sort of the first part of act one is sort of the setup and the way I'm doing the setup is that's when we get introduced to Teth Adam and Khufu who Khufu is also I also changed it around a little bit because this is DC Comics in the DC Universe and I'm allowed to change up even actual ancient history but Khufu is sort of the other son of Pharaoh Ramses II who would become Pharaoh and through this, after this, would sort of start the um, reincarnation process of Hawkman, and even with Hawk Girl in, as well. And so we get an introduction of Teth Adam as, and Khufu as brothers and sons of Pharaoh Ramses II. And again, we would still have Dwayne Johnson playing Teth Adam and whoever we want to play Khufu. We would also be introduced to the shadowy antagonists, not Sabak. Instead, the main antagonists of the film would be Blaze and Satanas, who are the son and daughter of the wizard Shazam. And we'd also get introduced to the wizard as well on the Rock of Eternity. And he, we would have his story, at least in the, the first act, searching for a champion to have the powers. We also discover that Teth Adam has a secret family. And we learn that Teth Adam doesn't want to be the pharaoh like his father. No, he instead doesn't want any absolute power. All he wants to do is to be with his family. And that's sort of the main setup of all the characters and sort of what Teth Adam really wants. He wants to be with his family. He doesn't want any power. He wants to just, again, be with his family. And sort of Blaze and Satanus, as the villains, they're sort of the ones that want to undermine their father because they're stuck in, like, hell. And they sort of want to be the ones in charge. And so the main theme of the movie that we would get introduced in Act 1 is that we would see Pharaoh Ramses II using his influence as the Pharaoh to torment the people of Egypt. And he uses his power harshly, setting up the idea of absolute power corrupting absolutely. And Teth Adam and Khufu, Khufu both work together and try to hold back their father's hand, not physically, but trying to hold back the um, proverbial corrupted power. And that would just have Ramses continuing to spiral into the darkness and sort of Ramses the second is sort of his darkness and his like evilness though is real in real life if you um follow what happened in exodus in the bible and yes that uh, well that happened uh, don't we're not gonna get into that but also this is further establishing that blaze and satanus are sort of the ones that are sort of steering the ship when it comes to the darkness that is inside Ramses II. And then we get into our call to action, which would show purity inside of Teth Adam. Like, Teth Adam would show that he is kind to the people that the pharaohs would consider slaves. Teth Adam would very much be the one to want to free the slaves and sort of like, no, we shouldn't be doing this and sort of show purity. And Khufu, whilst also like agreeing with his brother, is still very much like, but this is sort of just the way things are under father. If he, Khufu even would say that if I was the one in charge, we wouldn't have slaves anymore. And with the show of purity from Teth Adam, that is when the wizard chooses him to be the champion. And Teth Adam states, would state to the wizard that he doesn't want the power and that Khufu would be a better choice for the champion. But the wizard would state that he sees something in Teth Adam that he doesn't see in Khufu. And the wizard bestows the power of the gods into Teth Adam. But unbeknownst to the wizard, the powers were corrupted using the Egyptian gods instead of the Greek gods. And that would be Blaze and Satanus making a deal with Anubis, maybe. I can't remember which god I said specifically, but that Egyptian god would be the one to sort of help corrupt the powers. Because in the, the New Earth, the... Uh, post-crisis pre-new 52 origin the powers are very much based off of the greek gods and satanus specifically no blaze specifically is the one that would corrupt them with the um egyptian gods instead and making a deal with the with anubis but instead i'm having it be blaze and satanus because they're brother and sister and they're both children of the wizard just making it so much better and then we would get the final part of act one which is resistance should i stay or should i go 
and Teth Adam would go to his wife and speaks to her about his new powers. And he tries to tell her that he doesn't deserve them, he doesn't want them, but she tells him that that is why he has the powers. This is why he was chosen, because he, there is an inherent goodness inside of him. That is why he was chosen to be the champion. And then we go into Act 2, which is... <coughs> Which is us getting to the moment of crossing the threshold. And so this would be the moment where after Ramses II causes more harm to people, that is when Teth Adam finally stands up to his father and he stops him from causing more harm. And whilst he does, that, does this as the champion of the wizard, he would accidentally kill his father. But he would still be deemed a hero because it was accidental, it wasn't purposeful. Sort of how in when you watch Black Adam, he's just killing people left and right. And he's doing that on purpose. This one is an accident, so it's like, mm, you don't really have any evil in your soul. It was an accident, so I'm not going to say you're a bad champion. That was an accidental kill. And so the wizard questions his decision at first, but he would continue to watch over Teth Adam with a watchful eye. Again, though the wizard is saying like, okay, you're good, but that was, and sure, that was an accident, be more careful because... When you're not careful, stuff like that happens. You killed your dad. But <coughs> it's okay at the moment. It's okay. I'm, it's okay. Meanwhile, Blaze and Satanus would decide to have Teth Adam be the one to free them from being in hell instead of Ramses II. Because that was their original plan, to have Ramses II free them from hell. But then after seeing what Teth Adam was able to do, they're like, hmm, he's our champion. Or he's our father's champion. We corrupted his powers. Maybe he should be the one that we should get to um, let us free. Like, let our physical forms back out into the world. Hmm. Maybe that's how we do it. And so this is when we would get our B story arc. Mainly following Khufu, who would be declared the pharaoh after his father would die. And he would work really hard to undo the harm that his father caused his people. He would start ending slavery around... Um, um, it, uh. He would start ending slavery in Egypt, saying that they don't need slaves anymore. I know that probably didn't happen in real life, but since we're trying to make show goodness in people, I'm going to have Khufu end slavery, but then if after he dies, the next pharaoh redeclares slavery, then that's going to happen because real life really happened, and that really sucks. Slavery is a piece of shit. Anyway, um... He would also work with his brother to prevent more invaders from entering Egypt. And that was when he would soon discover the nation of Kondok. And he would give that to his brother as a respite. As sort of like, hey, brother, you've been doing a lot of good. And because of that, this is a country that I've discovered. You may live here. You may have Kondok. There are people here. You can live with them. You can be their protector. Egypt is great. Egypt is doing great right now. Go help them. And even, look, I know you are trying to keep it a secret. I know you have a secret family. You can live there with them. Because no one in Kondok knows who you are. You can live freely. So you don't have to worry about having a secret family. And of course, that would be sort of the main thing with Khufu. Trying to have a better relationship with his brother. And allowing his brother to have the life that he always wanted. And then we would get the moment of fun and games where during this period, Teth Adam would continue to use his powers for the greater good. And the wizard would start to be, start to be relieved of his worries where he was constantly thinking, mm, maybe Teth Adam will kill again. No, no, he's not doing that. He's actually doing great job. So yeah, I'm not going to be worried about that. But then Blaze and Satanus would continue to work in the shadows. And Teth Adam and his family would later move to Kondok with Teth Adam acting as Kondok's protector, as I stated earlier but then we would get to the midpoint and it would be at this point where blaze and satanus would manipulate hathset and octon into killing teth adam's family and this would send teth adam into a rage and he would want his revenge hathset is a major character in ancient egypt um in dc's ancient egypt because hathset is the one that kills um khufu and his lover which would begin the reincarnation cycle, and Octon is the actual person that killed Teth Adam's family. And so we get into the next part of external to internal, well, where Teth Adam would confront Khufu about what his priests did, but Khufu would calm his brother. He would even make the promise that they will meet the gods' justice, but not in the way that Teth Adam wants. No, Teth Adam 
would want them to be killed, but that's not what the God's justice is. And so this moment would have Teth Adam fall into a depression, leaving him not wanting to be Kondok's protector anymore. And then we get into the part of Act 2 which is called All is Lost. When he is alone, he can only think about his losing, about losing his family. He would only think about how he lost his family and how he doesn't have anyone anymore. Sure, he has Khufu, but he doesn't have his wife and he doesn't have his kids. And that is when Blaze and Satanus would slowly begin to creep into his ear. That's when the manipulation of Blaze and Satanus would get into his mind and they would promise to give him the knowledge he desires about where Octon is. And in return, he must set them free. So he agrees. And then we get into the last bit of Act 2 called Dark Knight of the Soul, and Teth Adam would discover Octone is alone and does what he believes is necessary. He kills Octone, purposely breaking his vow to the wizard and to Khufu. And after killing Octone, the bridge to allow Blaze and Satanus to enter the mortal realm would have been opened. And so we get finally into Act 3. We're getting into the final part of the movie where we're getting where the corruption of Black Adam is taking over. Sure, the power is sort of helping him, but at the same time, Blaze and Satanus is getting into his mind, show, slowly revealing what he really desires, the darkness inside of him slowly creeping up, not only because of Blaze and Satanus, but because of the powers as well. And so we start Act 3 with the fix. In Kondok, Teth Adam returns to see Blaze and Satanus creating a throne for Teth Adam, creating it to where we can get the image of Black Adam sitting on the throne of Kondok, sitting back, looking out to the people. And so, once he sits on the throne, darkness would begin to fully take over him, and Khufu arrives and notices Blaze and Satanus, and he questions his brother, but Teth Adam tells him that he rules this land. He is the ruler of Kondok and that Khufu must leave. And so then we get into the finale, the final moments of the film. The wizard appears in front of the three villains and tells Teth Adam that he's being corrupted by Blaze and Satanus, that he can still fight off the darkness. Sure, Adam, you may be controlled by Blaze and Satanus, but you can still find a way to the light. What you did to Octone, that is just one hint of the darkness that they have, in, that you have inside of you, that they are trying to pull out of you, but it can all be fixed. Look, I know that there is good in you. You don't have to hide in this darkness. I'm sorry that you lost your family, but there is good in you. Don't let the darkness take over. And then that is when Blaze and Satanus approach their father. But right before they can deal a killing blow to their father, Teth Adam comes and kills both of them, quickly snapping their necks, punching a hole through Satanus's chest. And Satanus looks at him, shocked. And Teth Adam just lets him die. And Blaze and Satanus return to, the, to hell, but not the way they wanted. And so Teth Adam looks at the wizard and he tells them that they didn't corrupt him. No, he knew that the darkness was always there inside of him. They just helped him release it. And so the wizard and Teth Adam have a massive fight in the throne room of Kondok. It is back and forth, Teth Adam proving to be more powerful than the wizard. But ultimately, the wizard wins and he's encasing Teth Adam into a scarab. A small scarab that holds all the power. And the wizard, weakened, we go to the closing image where the wizard places the scarab on a wall. And waving his hand, he shows, he writes markings on it in ancient Egypt. And it reads, Here lies the corrupted champion of Kondok, the man who would destroy all life. Kem Adam, Black. Adam. And we would cut to black. The credits would roll. And that is what I would do with a Black Adam movie. 
set completely during the ancient Egyptian times. We would see Black Adam's entire origin where he would start as a hero in his fall into darkness. And sort of the next time we would see him after this would be in a, in a Shazam movie where he would be the main antagonist of the story. But throughout that entire movie, it would be about Billy Batson stopping Black Adam, not himself as the Shazam form, but him as Billy Batson. Because this would be a way, in my mind, if you want to do a Black Adam franchise, you have him next in Shazam 3, have him find a way as the main antagonist to fight Shazam, but then ultimately it is Billy Batson, again, not Shazam, that beats him by talking sense into him, telling him that they are still good inside of him, and so Black Adam would accept what Billy has to say, and he would accept the goodness, and then the next time, if they wanted to do a Black Adam 2, that's when you said it in modern day, that's when you try to get him more acclimated to the modern conduct, and that's when you put him in the anti-hero category that The Rock really wants Black Adam to be. But yes, that was my pitch for Black Adam. What were your thoughts on the pitch? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you indifferent to it? Whatever your thoughts, post them in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. That way you can be up to date with all the videos I have here on the channel. Also hit the notification bell. That way you can be notified whenever a new video like this comes your way. Until next time, I've been Mr. Eli Mac. You have been the audience. And I hope you all have a great rest of the day.